Again, it's good to be in the house of the Lord today. That's a, it's, you know, it's kind of amazing that we get a chance to, to come here on Sundays, and it's just not like just to show up, right? We, we're actually coming here to be in the house of the Lord, His presence here. I know He's with us every day, but it's just an amazing thought. I, I never want to forget that. Um, and so if I say that a lot, guys, I apologize, because it's so good. I've been in the world for a little bit. <laughs> And when, it's, when I get to come here to, to, to my father's house, it's just an amazing time for me. And I'm just, I'm just very welcome. I mean, so, so thankful for it. So if, I hear, if you hear me say this a lot, this is why. So we're getting ready to take up our tithes and offerings. Amen. Yeah, we can do that. And guys, I don't really have a, a, you know, a whole big speech for, for, the, for the tithe message. It's just, you know, the only thing I want to say is, we're very thankful that uh, we are now just like we are not. We don't we don't tithe to get, like we don't for, we don't forgive to get forgiveness. We are forgiven. We're forgiven people now, and part of that is along with that we don't give to get. We just we're just givers now. So it's so awesome that we can come together, and when we, when it's time for offering, it's something that comes out of your heart because you're a giver. And I just want to thank all those who continue to give to the church, give to the work of the Lord, and uh, thankful that he's done a work in our, in our lives that we now can be just givers. Amen? Guys, come forward. And those of you, are, you, can, you can do that at your seat, or you can fill out some of the papers as, the, um, as we, we bring the offering plates by, and uh, you can get that offering in there. Um, Brother Dwayne, you want to bless the offering? Glory to God. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for expectation of all that you desire to be done. Thank you, Lord, that you give us wisdom and guidance, Lord, on how to use the tithe, Lord, and use the offering, Lord. We thank you that it multiplies supernaturally right now, Lord, to provide all that you need to be done right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, guys. Um. So I'd like to take this time to welcome all the visitors that are visiting. So thank you for coming today. Uh, if you're visiting online, thank you for, for tuning in. Uh, we're so thankful to that you tune in to see what the, the Lord is doing in this house. have a couple announcements that are going on. Upcoming events, guys. The uh, women's group is going to be meeting July 30th. That's at 6 p.m. And then as, as we've been doing, which I think is a really, really awesome thing that we do, is the Main Street Social. Uh, if you guys haven't been there, it's a good chance to, good time to get to meet one another and sit and talk and break bread. You know, that's something that, uh, uh, that's, that's missed, I think, and it's a great opportunity because there's so many of you guys that I haven't really met or talked. And uh, so next time if you see me come over or if I see you, I'm going to come over and say hi. But that's going on next week on July 31st, and that'll be at 12 p.m. Uh, some other things going on. Um, remember the Isaias Wolf, uh, guys? There's a, there's a message in there, or at least a, a, a something in there talking about him. He's, he he used, was a part of the body. He's still a part of our body. And he's gone on to do what I believe the Lord uh, has put in his heart to go do. He's in the service now. So if you guys uh, feel like just want to encourage somebody, you know, sometimes if you want to be encouraged, you, you need to be an encouragement. Just if you get, there's, there's, some, uh, there's a message, excuse me, there is an address there that you can send letters to, and he'd greatly appreciate it. Amen. Also, let's see, we continue to have Bible studies here in the morning, guys. So uh, if, you, if you get here early, that is in the fellowship hall. Um, and then we also have the service that we're, we're, we're starting today. <laughs> today. Sorry, I'm just kind of out of, out of place here. here. <laughs> Not usually <laughs> have to run in and do all this. Um, but it's a good thing. God's stretching me all the time. Monday, guys, intercessory prayer here in the fellowship hall. I'll look at the times here. Tuesday, we have also intercessory prayer with uh, contact Miss Janet Summers. If you, if you wanted to do that, that's an awesome thing. That's an awesome ministry, the intercessories, the intercessors. They're, they're praying. They're always praying for us, and, and I really appreciate that. Wednesday, July 27th, there's also prayer here with uh, Pastor Brandon, but he is going to be out of town, so he's probably not going to be doing that, but I'll make sure he sends something out on that. Life groups, guys, we've kind of put those on the shelf a little bit um, as uh, this church relaunch we've been talking about. That's going to come up on a line again in August. And we'll have some more information for you guys then as we um, get back into the flow of things. 
Um, Friday, Youth Connect. <laughs> That's always a good thing. Guys, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, a, it's a cool ministry, guys, for, your, for the youth. I don't know. I'm, I'm so blessed to have, you know, like Pastor Trey over there that runs that. I love to knowing that I'm dropping off my daughter and she's going to be um, uh, fed the word and they're going to have a good time. She's going to learn about the Lord and it's really, really cool. And, and meet all her friends and friends can, or she's bringing friends and it's really cool. Uh, Saturday, July 30th, guys, there's a relaunch meeting at 9 o'clock. We've had some, some good turnout for that. We've had a lot of people come up and show up for those meetings. So if you haven't gone to one of those, please come along. We're talking about the relaunch, what, what we want to do with the church, what we believe in the Lord is uh, 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 moving us towards. And if you want, and I, I'm sure everyone wants to be a part of it, some, some of you guys have some awesome ideas. Please, if you can, show up for that. Yeah, amen. At this time... Um, the youth can be excused. The youths. Well, amen. So, guys, um, my name is uh, Pastor Mike. I'm one of the pastor the pastors here at Life Springs. And uh, today I'm going to be bringing the message. So I'm um, excited about the opportunities that the Lord uh, gives me to, to get in the pulpit from time to time. And um, I'm looking forward. Let's just, just let's, uh, bow our heads today and let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your, for your word. Lord, we thank you for the things that you're showing this church. Thank you for uh, being in our lives, Lord. We thank you that uh, you could be, you are here with us today, Lord. Help help us in in our times that we need you, Lord. Uh, I ask you, Lord, right now to to please be with me as I am uh, bringing this message, Father. Thank you for what you're doing through your people here, and thank you for your church, the bride, Lord. I thank you that you're doing amazing things with this bride, and we ask this in Jesus' name, Amen. All right, guys, so the title of my message is called The Remnant. You know, that's a, that's a word. Uh, there's, there's things that I like to preach about, and like all of us, we all have different things that are on our heart that the Lord puts on our hearts to preach about. And sometimes I, I tell God, there's things that I like to talk about because that's just what he's put in me. Um, so some of them, a lot of my messages are going to be geared to what I believe the Lord uh, has me study. But the word remnant, I haven't really, really looked at it. I've seen it out through, through, the, through the Bible. And so I just kind of went through it and uh, picked out that I believe. I always tell Sheila, I have all these dots everywhere. And once God gives me something, it's like, well, how am I going to do to connect all these all? So hopefully I, I do a good job today in putting all these what the Lord has put on me. So I've been running what I would talk about today. And all week long, the word remnant has been in my spirit. I've had a lot of dots out there, as I said, and uh, hopefully we will be able, after I finish, I hope this will come through. Merriam-Webster, the definition of the word says it this way, an unusually small part, a member or trace remaining, a small surviving group often used in plural, or an unsold or unused in piece of goods, a remnant of fabric. You guys probably heard that. The Bible is full of stories of a small number being used here and there. When things have looked their bleakest, there's usually a small trace of remaining people that keep things going. How many of you guys have kind of noticed that in the Bible? A group of survivors that come out, of, come out on the other end to make an incredible impact on the people and the regions around them. And I don't know if you figured, out, figured this out, but what I'm talking about is everyone in this house that has called on the name of the Lord and has been saved and walks with the wonderful king that he is, the Lord Jesus Christ, you guys are a remnant. You guys ever thought about that? It's amazing, amazing thought, a remnant. We, the remnant, have been left on the earth to bring the kingdom of God in all his realities to be made manifest for the world to see. That's a heavy assignment, don't you guys think that? I don't know if maybe you ever thought of that. Uh, Matthew 5, 14 states it, that we are the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hid. That's, that's pretty amazing uh, um, statement in the Bible that says we cannot be hid. Guys, we're meant to be out in front of people. We're, at, we we're meant to, uh, to, to be a touch point for, the, for a dying world. 
A lot of times I'm like, Lord, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> but it's not about what I want, it's about what he wants. And it's been so many, it's been said so many times in this house recently, uh, Bill's used it, some people have come through has used it, that Romans 8, 19 says, for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. You know, one translation says it's the world is on its tiptoes waiting to see who are these, who are the remnant or who are the sons and daughters of God. And guys, this is the church. The beautiful thing about God's plan and the reality of the remnant is that his desire will be accomplished despite everything that we see that's happening today in the world. I don't think that this is going to happen. I know that it's going to happen because it's already happening. We are seeing pockets of stories where the sons and daughters of God have been revealed. And it is an amazing thing to be a part of what the Lord is doing through the, his remnant. I've been part of so many testimonies that have been amazing to witness. Now, guys, I'm just going to. I'm going to tell some stories quick. I think uh, testimonies are, are really good. I'm going to do that, but I'm also going to, there's a reason why I want to say, because I don't know if you guys, have you guys ever seen God do something super amazing? I mean, uh, you, so, just something that you never thought that God would do, and he does, and shortly after that, there's this big crash. I don't know, am I the only one that's ever experienced that? God does something super amazing. You see in his hand, you can't believe it. And then there's always, I don't know if always, but it seems to me, something comes up and tries to kind of rob what that is. So I'm going to tell some stories real quick. And I am also want to just, as I'm telling this story, I'm going to use a Bible reference story that it's, it's coming up. Um, and what we can do when we have these experiences and what to do. And I'm going to show you through scripture what God did through an individual and, and some things that God did for him so that when these opportunities come, because guys, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to happen with the church. I really believe God is doing amazing things in, the ch in this body and all the body, all the church. I really believe, you know, there's a, says that the, that the bride is, that Jesus is coming back for his bride without a spot or wrinkle. Now, now how does that happen? That's going to happen pretty, pretty quick. That has to happen. So I'm, I'm just waiting. I'm that guy that's not willing, not wanting to be on the escape pod mentality. <laughs> You know, God, take us out of here. It's kind of crazy on this prayer that God in John says not to take us out, not to take them out of the world, but keep them safe from the enemy. So I, I always, when I read that, I just said, I got to get this escape pop mentality out of here, and I got to be ready for what the God wants to do on the earth and, I went, and what my part of it is. is. So sorry, I'm just going to give you a little little base of what my, um, my uh, message is going to be today. So... I remember one time that I um, had an individual that was um, a friend of mine at work had come to me and said that his uh, family member was, was in a coma. And um, so I was thinking, that's, that's pretty crazy. Uh, how long has he been in a coma? And they said he's been in a coma for like, like, like a month. So he came to me because he, um, he had heard that I go out and pray for people and some stories had kind of gotten around. It's kind of funny how there's some good rumors and bad rumors that started wherever you're working. But uh, whatever that, however that came to be, he came and asked me if I could come pray for his, his family member. So I took some guys with me, and I said, hey, we're going to go pray for this guy. He's at a hospital, and I don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to at least go down there and, uh, because a friend of mine asked me to come, and well, let's go see what God does. And so... We went there, and there was a whole bunch of people there. A bunch of family members were in the waiting room, and uh, he was introducing us all and said, hey, these are some guys that are going to pray for, uh, you know, the brother-in-law that was in there with a coma. And um, he said, we, so I talked to everybody, and they said, we're going to take you down to where, where, he's at, where he is right now. So I'm thinking, okay, cool. We're going to get, we've already met the family. They're already, you know, warming up to us. They're open for prayer, which is pretty cool. So we, we go in there, this room, and they said, before you go in this room, you have to go bunny up. You know what that means? Like when you go into surgery, you see these guys on, you know, and all this, and all the surgery gear and all that, you know, you know the, the bunny suit with the mask. And I'm going, well, what's going on? What kind of condition is this guy in that we have to go bunny up? But anyway, so we end up going into the room, and there we see the guy. He's in there. He's got tubes everywhere. His eyes are closed. 
And we're going, wow, this is not what I thought it was going to be. This guy is like really like <laughs> two of his eyes are closed and there's all the things you see on, on the TV, right? So not knowing really what to do because, you know, guys, there's not, there's not something or there's not a technique or something you can learn. We just we walk by faith, right? So we went out there and we just started praising God. We started singing some songs there in the, uh, in the hospital room. And we just started praising the Lord. And um, the wife's, well, the guy's wife was in the room with us. And I don't know where this came from. Maybe I heard somebody say it. But I just walked up and whispered in his ear, the kingdom of God has come to you today. Don't know how it came about. Don't know why I said it. But I just said it to him and his eyes opened up. You talk about jumping back. I wasn't ready for that. I went, what? And it was, boo. You know, he's, his eyes are open, and I just kind of looked at everybody, and we all went, what? And, and the wife has had her head down the whole time, in, in, and I, I kind of went back and I said, I, I think his eyes are open. And so she looked up, and she saw him, and I said, uh, I, said I, th- I think he's coming out of his coma. And so we, we kept praising God, and then she said, hey, honey, if you can hear me, blink your eyes twice, and he did. And then she said, if you can hear me, try to raise your arm. And he kind of did a little bit like that. And that doctor started coming in. We got out and like, whoa, this is amazing. We walked out like, oh, my God, we were on such a high, such a high, guys. We walked out. We were high-fiving each other. Man, I can't believe all the stuff that God did. And, um, you, know, we got, we, you know, we got a report about, a, about two weeks later that that individual passed away. And um, you talk about a high moment, that mountaintop, and then a low time right there. And, um, you know, through that, through that, that really taught me a lot because a couple of the guys that went with me said they would never pray for anyone again. They couldn't believe what God had done and that now this guy is dead. And I don't try to figure out what, why this was and why it happened. All I know is at that time, the, the Lord got him, took him out of that coma and maybe to get right with his family. I don't know what it was, but he had some time there to get with his family before he passed away. But it was so amazing to me how you had this high moment with the Lord, and all of a sudden the, the feet get cut out, and, and the, the attitude that came afterwards. And um, it was tough because I'm trying to figure this out, and I'm trying to wonder why my friends don't want to go pray for anybody mo- no more because of the the aftermath. Another time I was... Uh, at where I was working, same the same thing. Where I was working, um, this individuals, they, um, this guy was walking around with. Um, he was on a production line. And he had these big old. I, I, I thought they were like. I thought he was listening to the radio. Actually, I thought he had some radios on. You know, some of these. You see some some kind of those, those headphones, and it's a safety issue where I was working because there's a lot of fork trucks running around, and I wanted to you know, talk to him and tell him, hey, you can't wear those when you're, when you're on the shipping line because you, you could become an accident. So as I got near, I saw that they weren't headphones, but they were kind of just these big clunky things. And so he says, I asked him, hey, what's going on? Are, are those headphones? And he said, no, these are like uh, it's hearing aids. So he had these old-fashioned hearing aids, this big, huge, that kind of hung over his ear. And I asked him, hey, what's going on? What happened, what happened to your hearing? And he was an older, older gentleman. He said he was, you know, um, in the military and a uh, compression bomb or something had gone off. He lost about 75% of his hearing. So I was like, oh, wow, that's crazy. So this is kind of, you we have to wear these. And, you know, he was, just didn't really have the money for the, for, the, for the nice ones. So I asked him if I could pray for him, right? And um, he was like, okay, I'm open to that. So we had this... Uh, conference room right off the uh, shipping floor and I waited till after work because I had to be wise about this you know I can't disrupt (laughs) work here but after work I'm kind of on my own time and we went into this conference room and uh, basically I just put my hands on his ears and said hey I want to pray for you I'm going to believe God's going to heal your ears so laid hands on him and as soon as I did that I snapped my finger and he turned around looked at me and then ran out of the house I mean he ran out of the building and I was, well, what is going on with this guy? I kind of chased him a little bit, and he kept running. And so I got a little afraid. I was like, what happened to this guy? So I come home, and I tell Sheila kind of what's going on. And I'm like, 
I don't know what happened to this guy, but he took off. Um, so I had to, so it's third shift, so I, I have to kind of sleep during the day and wonder all the time in my mind, I'm like, what happened? Why, why did this individual take off? And I'm wondering what's going to happen. Am I going to get in trouble? Is he going to tell us? You know, I don't know, because I, I didn't know anything that happened. Went through a whole lot of mental gymnastics, you know, was this, should I have done this? God, what did you do? Is he thinking, you know, think I'm crazy? But the next night, I, well, that night I saw him and I walked up to him and I said, hey, are you okay? And he said, yeah, uh, I just want to let you know that uh, when you snapped your fingers, my ear opened up and the first thing I wanted to do is run outside to hear birds. And he, and he was so elated. And that was a crazy time because all that time in between, high moment here, low moment, one of what's going on with this guy. Another time, um, I'll tell you one more story. There was a girl that had a really bad back, and um, she was t- complaining about, you know, her pain in her, in her body. And um, I was talking to a bunch of people, and we were all sitting around, and I asked, hey, is there any way I can pray for you? And she said, yeah. Um, and I said, well, awesome. So a couple of them went into the same conference room. I think this was an anointed conference room. <laughs> Lord's presence was always, always, always in there. But I took them in there, and it was about like six or seven of them. They came in, and they were like, you know, I want to just pray for you. So um, I sat her in this chair, and I don't know why I did, but I looked up and just grabbed her feet. And I noticed one of her feet was about, about I don't know, maybe two inches, maybe, no, about an inch, inch and a half shorter than the other one. And I said, I think part of the problem is your back is because you're kind of kind of walking like this. And I said, hey, if you don't mind, I'm going to. I said this in my hand. I'm, I'm, she even knows I'm funny. <laughs> Somebody hopes something thinks I'm funny. I said, do you want to be taller or you want to be shorter? <laughs> and she laughed at me like, what? I go, well, I'm going to ask God to, to grow out your leg. And she said, okay, well, yeah, I, I, I don't want to be shorter. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm just going to pray for her. So I prayed, as I'm praying for her, this leg goes zip. Now, it was a pretty crazy sight but here's what I noticed. All those people besides her ran out of the room. They ran out of the room, terrified. Me and her got to talk. She was excited. She was so appreciative. She's crying. I'm telling her how the Lord healed her. But again, amazing moment with the Lord right after that. Because I'm thinking everybody's going to see this, and this is, this, everybody's going to come to the Lord today because they saw this. That wasn't the case. <laughs> So there's so many times, guys, that I'm seeing this, and I'm, I want to prepare our hearts for this because I, I believe we're going to see these things, and then I want to have a good attitude, or I want us to be at least thinking about these moments when we were going to see some amazing things, and then there's going to be something that's going to try to come up and rob what God is doing, not just in that, but what he's doing in, in our hearts and how we are going to look at it, how, how we get to cope with it. Amen? So all these amazing, all these times, there were amazing things to watch, and I was on cloud nine. Because of the amazing things, I personally witnessed God do, but I was also quickly discouraged because I thought that all the people would give their hearts to the Lord, like I said, on the spot, and that streamers and confetti would come down from the sky, and everyone would praise God for what the amazing things he had just done. By the way, guys, I threw this in here. Don't ever lose the awesomeness of what God is doing through your life. Don't ever, you're going to start seeing these more and more. Don't ever get okay with them. Always have a reverence of awe. I was talking to um, Brother Dwayne about wanting to make a shirt saying, I serve an awful God. <laughs> He's full of awe, right? It's just kind of play over words. But I always want to make sure we, we keep that. It's amazing that when we see things or whatever God is going to do through our life, there will be something that comes up that will challenge us in what has just happened. Not sure where it comes from, but I know that it will happen. So let's take a look at Scripture and read an account of an amazing encounter with a God that got with a man that God did something spectacular with, and how it quickly went south on him. Now, if you have your Bibles, I have the First Kings. You guys can open that up. Go to the book of First Kings, and I'm going to be in chapter 19. 
And uh, you guys know the backstory. This is Elijah, Elijah, man of God, who's who prayed for the rain to stop, and um, you know, and it didn't it didn't rain for a long time. Then it started raining again after he prayed. Uh, he has this whole just this is right after the uh, Mount Carmel, uh, where all the prophets came against the Lord, and and the Lord did what He did. You guys should go back and read. It's pretty amazing, but. Uh, Big, big high moment in, in, in somebody's life, right? You see this amazing, amazing spectacle that God did through that man. And then we kind of, I'm going to kind of talk about the rest of the, I'm going to kind of break this down for a little bit. So I'm going to start in 19. And hey, I have told Jezreel, uh, Jezebel all that Elijah had done and also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. So he's basically, he's basically saying, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take your life, or I want your life taken. And when she saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. Now, this is what I'm talking about. There was just an amazing thing that God did with Elijah and that he witnessed an awesome sight and other things, too. And, and, you know, he started, you know, we also know that we started, a, he started a drought. He ended a drought. And I see that as I'm reading that, he, maybe he's thinking that, that when he gets these people out or what he's done, surely all those guys would come to the Lord. Don't you think that'd be an amazing account to come back and say, man, Jezebel's probably going to be the first one that gets saved after hearing what this amazing thing God did. You would think that would have been in, but that's that's not what happens. <laughs> she basically says, I want this guy dead in 24 hours. Imagine how Elijah felt. He went from an emotional high because of what God had done to, hey, I got to get away from here. You know, guys, that's that's something that I every time God did something really amazing or I want to witness him. There's always this afterthought. Something would come because I would think this is going to this is the moment where everybody's going to come to the Lord. This is the moment where everything changes. And then, boom, we get this knowing Jezebel's after us. Or even what maybe, what possibly happened. We, we, we just have these highs and lows with the Lord. And I just want to just keep talking about this subject. Let's go down to four. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under the broom tree. And he prayed that he might die. It's amazing. Does this guy know who he is? He prayed for rain <laughs> to stop. <laughs> I'm glad God didn't answer that one. But uh, he says that he might die and said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. This sometimes happen, this happens when you get discouraged after you see God do something amazing. And now all you want to do is go hide somewhere and lay low. You guys are going to be battling that. Next, we hear that Elijah is praying for God to kill him. As I said, the man that God answered so many prayers, it's a good thing that God didn't answer that one. You may be tempted to tell God not to use you again when people don't all cheer and clap for you when he uses you. But Elijah then starts to say how unworthy he is and probably feels like a failure in some way. You are sometimes going to second guess yourself. And sometimes close friends may question you. And why you did this or why you did that way, did this or, or, that what you, what, or what you did that way. You know, God's going to use people in different ways. It's not always going to line up to who you saw, how you saw somebody else do something or everybody's individual. You're all individuals. We all have our own personalities. We all, God may use us in different ways to, to, to make an impact in somebody's life. So sometimes... Um, you know, we get sometimes it's got to be this way, but God wants to kind of get outside of that. So just be careful of that. But just, just remember that, you know, um, we want to stay in the Bible and know that the things that God asks us to do, we want to stay along those lines. So just know that you're growing in the things of God. And while you're learning, you're going to fail sometimes. Guys, we're going to fail sometimes. Sometimes we're going to see those miracles like the person who came out of the who came out of the coma that a couple days later he he passed away what would have happened i just i was thinking to myself last night and i actually kind of weeped a little bit because i was really thinking about 
how the, my other friends, how it hit them so hard that I almost listened to that. And I almost said, you know, maybe we shouldn't pray for people no more. Maybe we shouldn't go out and, and, uh, and uh, do the things that God's put in our heart because we got to hear these stories. We got to watch these people or, or find out what, you know, the stories that happened. And I said, I'm glad that I didn't, I pushed myself past that because there's so many other things that I, I see and I continue to see. So um, you're gonna, there are going to be times, guys, that, you're, that God used you to do something, and sometimes it's not always going to work out the way you thought it will, or, or there may be some tragedy like, like this example I said, but push past it. Push past it. Amen? Five. Then he lay and slept under a broom tree. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked there. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake, a, a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and he drank and he lay down again. And then the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him. And he said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went into the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. It's a lot of stuff in there, guys. I'm just going to pull out with some of the things that I believe the Lord was showing. So Elijah took some time to rest after all this. You know, sometimes when you, when you see some miraculous things and it doesn't go your way or sometimes the, the, the table gets cut out, it's important to get back and take some time. Take some time to reflect on what's happened. Take some time, like I said, you know, I, I took some time even after all that, uh, especially the guy who came out of the coma and ended up passing away. I took some time to say, you know, I don't know why it happened, Lord. I, don't, I remember I didn't want to pray for a little bit for people, but I just, I don't know why it happened. But man, I, I'm not going to continue to stay there. I'm going to, I got to push past that. You know, I, I, I prayed a little bit more. I wanted to, I did a little bit more to, to, to just kind of get myself because I know that I was a call, a still call on my life, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't stay in that spot because it's, you know, it could happen where you, like my friends, where you don't want to pray any, you don't want to pray for any, any anymore. So God is gracious in his mercy that sometimes he'll tell us to come and just sit with him. You know, when you experience things of God, just getting alone with him will help you recharge your batteries, grow with him, get a new perspective, study the word, pray, Get charged up again, like we say. Get prayed up. That's funny. I like it. I like that. Don't get down because God may have some new things he wants you to do. So God sends him on another journey. Imagine that. This time the journey takes a little bit longer. The Bible says it took 40 days to get there. Does that sound familiar? Isn't it amazing when we get through a time there's, uh, we know that, that when Israel came out, some people, I've heard some people talk about the trip to the promised land, if they would have just took off and just stayed in formation and did all this stuff, it probably would have took about 14 days. Army Corps of Engineers, I've heard all these stories. It would have been a pretty easy trek across the wilderness to get over there if they just stayed right there. But, you know, God had to take them around the mountain. Um, I, you know, he, he, he used that 40 in the Bible as a time of testing. You see that, or, or a time of purification. So we see this again. It's funny, we see these stories again and again in the Bible of these accounts. Where, where here's, the, here's 40 days now. So I believe that time that God took him on that journey, it was a time for him to kind of get to recalibrate himself or maybe to get back and, you know, the, I got to get the right mindset. You know, I need to be ready for the next thing. And uh, so because I think that trip, I was reading, it was over 200 miles that he had to go to the next place he was going, but um, it wouldn't have took 40 days. But I always, I always think that's cool how God takes you and um, um, takes that time with you to kind of get your head right again. So I believe that this time helped him get through bouts of depression, unbelief, doubt, things of that nature. He finally gets to where God is, and let's read on. That's verse 9. And then he went into a cave, and he spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing, Elijah? So he said, I have been zealous for the Lord God of hosts and for the children of Israel. And for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, 
and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Amazing stuff there. Elijah gets there and goes into a cave. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. So he gets to the, the place where God is, where his presence is, the mountain where, where God wants, where God is, is going to or called him to come to. And the first thing you do, they throw him, he, they basically put him in a cave. And, you know, so many accounts in the cave uh, about people, they get into a cave. Remember when uh, David had all these men that were, you know, they're all running around with David, not showing what's going to go on. Take them into the cave of Medullam. This is a time that goes on in there. There's a lot of things that happen in that cave. I believe God is working on all those men in there uh, at that time in the cave of Medullam. Um, Bishop Ron, who's uh, had this story one time or analogy about a cave, uh, we talked years ago, and I was thinking about the story again. Um, when a, uh, do you know the eagles? There's a period in their life where an eagle has to make a choice if he wants to continue on in his life, in a sense. And what happens is they usually fly up to a very high place, and they go into this cave. Now, in this cave is where they uh, transformation changes. They can either die in that cave or they can allow change to happen. You know, what happens is um, they, they, they pick off all their feathers. They have to pick off all their feathers, and um, they have these beaks. Sometimes uh, over time, these beaks get all, they look a little weird, and they're not the way they used to be. They, the, the, the eagles will take their, their beaks and grind them against stones until basically take off all the stuff. Usually flying around at some point, you start to develop all the stuff around your eyes. So even in all that, it helps to take off all the stuff. And then they're laying in there, basically no feathers, no beaks, but clear eyes. A lot of times it said they come up and they come out of the cave and they just kind of lay up on these rocks and to kind of get um, healed by the sunlight, you know, the vitamin D in there. And it's also said in, in this that sometimes other eagles will come by and drop them food because they realize what part of the process that they're going through right now. We'll drop them down food for them. And then after that time, guys, they'll come out of there with a full feathers, full eyesight, and beaks very strong. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll come out of there and they're able to fly higher. They're able to see farther. So, so that part of their life, there's a, that's, it's every time when God puts you in a cave or you know, there may be sometimes that the Lord may put you somewhere where you think it's a dark place or a place of where, where are you, God? What's going on? There's something that he wants to do inside you. There, he's using that time to get you perfected, to be, to be more like his son. I always ask God, what are you doing? Sometimes he says, I'm trying to get you more like Jesus. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's what's going on. I got, I got, still got a lot of work to do. But the cave is not always a bad thing. All right, amen. So, um, Dave, um, so God takes him in a dark place so that he can mer- emerge more like a son. And God basically asks him, what's going on, son? And Elijah starts to talk to God and ask him questions. Do you guys know it's okay to ask God questions? You know, he doesn't get mad. Uh, he might not give you answers, but you can ask him a bunch of questions. And a lot of times, you know, he doesn't need to answer your questions, but, but uh, just you having the time, it's okay. He's not, he, he doesn't get hurt. He doesn't get offended if you have a question for him. So do you know, um, Elijah is telling God that I'm all alone out here and what you call me to do, and I'm the only one doing this. And when I do, th- and when I do what I believe you created me to do, there's always something out there trying to stop me. Has everybody ever had that play out in your life? <laughs> I'm doing what you're doing, God, and there's always something trying to keep me from doing that, right? Let's read on. 11, and then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. That's so funny. We watch this movie, Nativity, every year. This girl always, in the movie, she always recites this verse. The Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. 
and after the fire, a still small voice. So because God loves Elijah, he has an impersonal encounter with him and passes by him, his presence. It's pretty amazing as you read that. Do you know that he wants to do that when you get down, when you get discouraged? That he wants to show you who he really is and all that you really need. See, guys, I was, it was epiphany for me, and I want to kind of share this with you guys. All that we need and all that the lost really need is him. The miracles, the wind, the earthquakes, the healings are all seeds that point to the lost, that point the lost to the only one thing that matters, the presence of God. You know, sometimes you can, you may, and I'm just want to just use this as a caution. Sometimes you just may get into a point where you're looking to see the miracles. You're looking to see the earthquake. You're looking to see this. And God is in them. But the bigger thing I want, I believe he's trying to show us, or at least was showing me, is he's in all those. But the thing he really wants to point us to is to him. Those, that is, if you get that, don't ever forget that. Don't get so caught up in all the crazy things that the Lord's going to do, because he is. You're going to see some amazing things. Don't get so caught up into that. Get caught up in the presence, because that's what the lost really need. Yeah, the miracles are there to, to open up the eyes and, and to do some amazing things that, that, that start it. But the presence, you bringing the presence, when we encounter people, when we talk to people, when we uh, go out in the world and God does some amazing stuff, we are bringing his presence to the lost. We're bringing the presence to the people that need him. And that's, that's, a, that's an important thing. 13. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him. And said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of the hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword, and I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. And then the Lord said to him, go return your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Hazel, a king over Cyrus. Pretty cool stuff there. Elijah, in the presence of God, becomes awestruck again. This is what I see in the, this is what I see in the scripture. He learns to, you know, it's not in the it's not in the carmel moments. It's really in the moments that when you're face to face with your God, with your Father, that means everything. The awestruck the awestruckness should be in when we come as a as a as a family, as we come as an individual to be in the be face to face with with who the Lord is. And guys, sometimes people think it's in the things and in the miracles and all that, but those are things are going to happen. But the awesomeness or the thing that we want to keep our hearts tuned to is to always be in a off in a off I keep saying the off. You had to make me that shirt now. <laughs> uh be in in uh, just in awe of who God is. Amen. So, um, so Elijah becomes awestruck again, but then tries to make sense of it all. You see him kind of repeating that same sentence that he had in the last couple of chapters. Um, like you and I from time to time, but that, but we'll, we'll do that. We'll keep asking God, but what happened here? But why did you do this? And why didn't that happen? And why didn't I see this? And why did this person die? And why did this one get healed? And why did that one not get healed? And why did you do sometimes we're going we're gonna to have these talks that are going to come up. It's going to sound a little bit like Elijah. But notice what God does to him. He gives him another assignment. So that he does not get stuck on why this happened or why this didn't happen, but gets energized that God wants to use him again. I basically believe that God's telling him, snap out of it. You can stay in there. You could keep asking yourself. You're going to run yourself ragged of why this didn't happen, why that happened, why that didn't happen. I don't have time for you to do that. I need you to go to the next assignment. And the more of you want to sit back and think about it and keep bringing it up and talking to me, we can do that all day or we can snap out of it. Amen? All right. 16. Also you shall anoint 
Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and Elijah, the son of uh, Saphat, of Abel, Mechola, and she shall anoint as a prophet in your place. And it shall be that everyone who escapes the sword of Hazel, Jehu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elijah will kill. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel. All those knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth has not kissed him. So God gives him or us more work to do, but he also brings people to help do what we like to do. God likes to bring people to, ha- uh, to have a similar walk like you or like us to sharpen, to sharpen us. He has a way of making all the things that try to stop you work out. He brings like-minded people around you so, you can, so he can help you with your walk to keep going forward. You guys ever think about that? Um, you know, we all have different giftings. I love to hear the different pastors, what God's put on their heart. I love to see them uh, in the thing that God has them, the thing that, it, that, that brings fire to them. You know, I can, I, sometimes I can listen to Pastor Bill up here, and uh, when God's giving him something, he does this, mm. You guys ever notice that? Mm. This is a point that God really hits him with it. I see when Pastor uh, Couchman is up here, he's, he's, he's got his thing. He's got his stuff that the, the Lord has him study and the, the things that he's put on his heart. I love to watch him because you know what? He, he becomes alive. He comes alive in that thing, you know, when, when he's teaching it. Um, all you guys up there, all you guys that um, bring something to the table, God puts something in your hearts, you know, and when you have a chance to, to, to um, bring it out, um, that he's going to keep doing that, and he's going to bring people around you that have like mind, like-mindedness, you have similar uh, um, um, things that God wants to teach you because it keeps you sharp. You can bounce things off of each other. You can uh, talk about things. He doesn't like to leave you alone, and he brings Eli- uh, Elijah, Elisha, he brings uh, Elisha into for Elijah, which I think is pretty amazing. So, you know, there's going to be times, guys, the things that you think that you're alone, you're the only one that's doing this, you're the only one that's studying this, you're the only one that this brings fire to. No, no, no. There's other people that, um, that's going to help you along with that. And it's, so it's going to bring life to you. And, when, and as it brings life to you, it's going to be a blessing for the people. Because, because as you get together with those people that God brings around you, it's for the blessing of the church. It reminds me of something. So, guys, you know, we had we a had, uh, royal family here um, um, a couple weeks ago, last week. It was really amazing was for them to come down. I was pretty uh, amazed of all the people that came here from all over the, the country. We had people from California, Florida, all over Texas. We'd gone out and did a, a lot of uh, street ministry. It was really cool watching God do some, some cool miracles through these guys. Came back Saturday, and everyone who God used came up and shared their testimony. And um, it's pretty amazing listening to all those miracles and stuff that, you know, God how that orchestrated that time. And, you know, I had people coming up here and talking about, you know, my church doesn't do this and blah, blah, blah. And I wish my pastor did this more and blah, blah, blah. And I was just kind of hearing that. Let everybody go up. And I said, it's, it's, it's now the, the pastor's time to get up. <laughs> so what I walked up is I said, hey, guys, you know, the church, the church is, uh, this church is, for, is a place for all of us to come and to bring our gifts. There's going to be, there's opportunities that the Lord is going to give you uh, sometime. I don't know when it's going to be. You know, maybe your pastor is not open to that. Maybe your pastor is not this, but you know what? He's your pastor. So you know what? There's something that God w- want. maybe as he's teaching you this, it's going to be for a time maybe down in the se- down, down season. But here's what you need to understand. You are here as you're learning, as you're getting trained. You're here to be a blessing for that church. I told them, you know what I do? All the pastors in my church, they sit right here in this front row. I always sit back here. You know why I did that? Because years ago, somebody gave me a word that I was to be here to be a blessing. And I was to work with my pastor. 
and I was to not not be in not to be in the front row, not like telling me not to, but you are to be behind him, pushing and praying for him, being what you're supposed to be, a blessing until the moment comes where God wants to use you. So you guys are up here talking. I want you to understand that as God's putting this gift in your or revealing this gift that you have or the revelations coming, don't slam the church. This is this is the church. And this is the body. This is um, the bride, and you are going to be instrumental in what happens here. So whatever your gift is, be patient, uh, be praying for your pastor, and just stay ready. And when he needs you, you're there for him. So don't go back. Don't be going, I think I know more than the pastor. You stay in line, and you, you be a servant. That's, that's, what I, that's, what I, that's what I shared with him. So it's, ke- it's kept me. And in, in, uh, I've always remembered that, and I've always kept that. That's, that's my role here. That's our role here is to, to help the pastor with, with things of the, of the church. Miracle signs and wonders will follow the believer, and sometimes we may think that Mount Carmel, the, Mark Car- Car- the Mount Carmel experience is the way to go, but our walk with Christ and the way we manifest his presence to others will ensure that there will always be a remnant on the earth. My friend says this uh, saying, the best gospel preach is the one lived. You know, guys, um, you know, we can go out and do all the things that God has us to do, the, the different um, uh, anointings or whatever you call them, the different gifts in operation. But the biggest thing, guys, that I think that, that, that uh, we forget, and I was talking to even a, a, a guy at work as leaders, right? At leaders, there's, there is a way that we're supposed to carry ourselves. You know, uh, you know, I was talking to a manager there and saying the, the thing that you're carrying or the way that you're acting, the way that you're showing these other guys, is that the way that you want to you want to represent yourself? Is that the, is that what you want them to see, how you're acting, the way you, the way you do things? Because they are watching. And I believe that Elijah's walk was more powerful than everything. And I don't mean just the mighty miracles. I think that as his, as his walk with the Lord and all the things, people were watching him. What does this guy do when things happen? How is he on a daily? That is more powerful than any miracle, any, any sign and wonder. Our daily walk is more powerful than all the miracles and things that you're going to see or even be a part of. I really believe that in my heart because... What you carry and the way you carry yourself and what you carry in the kingdom is, is, is amazing. And people need to see that. And you, need to, and you have to be aware of that. You're, um, you know, you, we carry the presence of the Lord on a daily. And we're not, it's, we, we're, it's not just set on an ox cart just kind of going to the desert. You know, you see that in, the, in Scripture, right? They set the, the presence of the Lord and just kind of went wherever. We're not ox carts. We actually carry the presence, and we want to represent the king as best as we can. And I believe that in doing that, that's going to bring more people to the Lord than any amazing miracle that he may use you in. Amen? All right, kind of winding down, guys. <clears throat> One of the things that we must be aware of is that if you're in Christ, you are part of a present-day remnant. Jesus calls us the salt, and one of the functions of salt is to, pres- is to preserve, which is what, remin- what the remnant does. We are called to preserve God's standard in the earth, regardless of what we see happening in our society. We're also here to represent the hope of restoration and salvation in the earth. Though it can get tempting when you see what is happening around, around you, don't get discouraged. Keep shining your light. Keep being salt being the remnant that God needs in the earth. And while we know everyone won't come to Christ, let's be the difference that God desires so we can bring restoration to as many as possible. I'm going to leave you with one more thing here. Romans 11:15 says it this way. So too at the present time, and I'm using the Amplified Classic Edition. So too at the present time, there is a remnant, a small believing minority, which I believe is in this church, selected or chosen by grace, which is Jesus, by God's unmerited favor and graciousness.
Guys, I just want to, I just feel like I just wanted to, this has been on my heart uh, this week as God was helping me study the remnant. I just want to make sure when the things are starting to happen, when you see God do amazing things, get ready for something else is going to come try to take, chop out the, the legs from under it. But be of good cheer. Stay in God's presence. His presence is always bigger than anything that you're going to witness. And that what we carry is so important. And, and as we show um, the world a life that's lived or sold out for Jesus, it's going to be more impactful than anything, any miracle is ever going to be. Amen? Amen. All right, guys. So at this time, I just, let's just pray. Father, we thank you for today. Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for um, what you're doing here in this house. Lord, help us to continue to be awestruck by you, Father, by the things you're doing, Lord. Uh, help us to stay humble, Lord, to stay hopeful no matter the things that we see or hear or witness. Father, we want to be people who are grounded in you. And I thank you, Lord, that this church loves you, Lord. And I thank you that, um, that we are believers. Like I said earlier, we're not feelers. We're believers. And we believe your word and what you said. And I thank you for everyone here. Lord, I pray a, a special blessing over every family that's here today. And I pray that they would go out and make an impact in their community, first off in their home, Lord, and then everything around in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, guys, at this time, if uh, you guys are looking for prayer, if you guys need some prayer, please don't hesitate to come up. There will be some people up here to pray for you. Uh, if you just uh, want to go out and go uh, beat the lunch crowd, you're welcome to do that. Go in the, the love of the Lord. And I uh, just thank you for you guys coming today. Amen. Amen.